Hello and welcome. Today I'm at TNS uh, Thurlow Nun Standen, which is a, an agricultural machinery dealership just near Norwich. Now, yesterday I, I told you guys that um, I would be going to visit a um, highly specced German tractor and I'd be going to have a look at one. Well, well done to Ben Chesworth, Irish Farming, and also to Seelan Doherty, Henry Sparing, and there's lots more of you guys who got it right. So well done everyone if you did get it right. Now, let's have a look at this tractor. So this is a Fence 724. It's rated at 240 horsepower. As you can see on the front, it's got the Fence weight block on the front, which is 1800 kilograms. And if we just move around to the side, we can see that um, it's got 540, uh, 65 Trelleborg tires on there. I have I have heard very good things about these Trelleborg tires. Apparently they do last quite a while. So moving on, you can see um, it's got lovely styling on the side there. It's got the AdBlue um, or SCR exhaust on the side, as you can see. And then looking at the bonnet here, we can see that it's um, sloping down with like a quite a futuristic style. Um, and then if you just look at the cab, um, I'll show you inside, but the cab literally curves up um, so that when you're sitting in the seat, you, can, you get really good um, visibility um, out onto the uh, on, onto the field uh, or to where you're driving. Sorry. So moving around to the back of the machine, we can see we've got the rear linkage and a lovely um, hydraulic top link, which is quite nice for when you want to make those adjustments on a, like a cultivator or a plow or something. You can just do it all from the cab, uh, which is a very nice feature to have um, indeed. And you can also operate it from the outside here as well. Um, you've obviously got your PTO and your linkage controls there as well on the outside. Um, so looking at the back, it's actually relatively simple here. If you were to, comp to compare this to another tractor or something, I, I was expecting this vent to be a lot more complicated on the back, um, but it's actually relatively simple on the back here. You've got your hydraulic sport, hydraulic SCVs on the side there. You've got your rear end oil cap there. You've got your electric outlet there as well. And we've also as well on the side, ISA bus functions on the side there as well. Um, sorry, there's your air brakes. And as well, we've got hydraulic brakes as well, should you need them. Um, and then moving down, obviously you've got the PTO and the rear draw bar there as well, which has got the Clevis in at the moment. Um, so a very nice, um, nicely laid out um, rear, rear back end there on the Fent, um, which I must say I do quite like. So moving around to the actual Fent itself, you can see we've got the keys in here now. Um, we can see that we've got a nice staircase to get in here, three steps. Um, add blue on the diesel tank as well, forgot to mention that. Um, so we're just coming into the cab now. I forgot to say this fent is apparently straight off the line and I think it's done something like five hours. So it's a very, very low houred um, machine. So we'll just pop the keys into the side of the machine here and I'll just pull the steering wheel down there. Um, so as you can see on the right hand side, this is something I've never seen before, but you've actually got like a call center microphone in the cab here as well, which is quite nice. Um, apparently it's really good for when you're on your phone with the Bluetooth, um, it apparently picks up the sound in the cab a lot better and you can move it nearer your face, for example, if you wanted to get um, a better, um, yeah, better microphone. So as I said um, earlier about the front of the cab, you've got this lovely curved windscreen, which you might not be able to see it very well in this video, but it comes all the way up to the cab. That's quite a nice feature of Fent to do, although I should think it's very expensive to replace this glass should it crack, because you've got a, a, a single piece of windscreen there to replace, which I should think costs a fortune, um, but very nice nonetheless. So moving down, we can see that we've got the the fence steering wheel here and all of the um, steering instruments. You've got the two flashing lights there, which is the, indicating the Vario function. Um, so you can go forwards and backwards on the joystick here, and you can also as well set it up so that you just have forwards and backwards on the pedal um, using the electric um, shuttle there, or you can go forwards and backwards using the joystick here as well by simply nudging it to the left um, to uh, engage forwards and backwards. Um, as you can see down here, it actually tells you um, how to operate it there. Um, on, moving on the on, onto the command arm here, You've got a really nice um, auxiliary joystick here, which you can program to operate, um, for example, like trailers or plows on the back, for example, or even a front loader. Because what you can do is you can put any front loader on this tractor, like a, a quickie front loader or, or stole or any other. You can put any branded front loader on this machine and you can still use it with this um, with its own built-in auxiliary joystick which is a really nice function um, to have now moving on to the computer i know sometimes um, computers can be a bit daunting in these tractors but they're actually not that bad um, because if you just remember to press this home button on the right hand side here all we've got to worry about is this section here on the fence um, on the fence computer because all you're getting here is the information for the tractor including the forward speed 
the cruise control speeds, your the um, your how much fuel you're using per hour, and then obviously down there as well, you've got your pedal mode, which you can set to um, different speeds, for example. Um, but all you've really got there is the tractor part to worry about. Um, but if we just move down here as well, you, that's your GPS, and then you've got a lot of other functions on here as well, which you can use. Um, which, to be fair are quite complicated should you not know what you're doing but I've been told by the people here at TNS that if you're worried just literally press the home button and it takes you back to this screen this little square screen all you need to worry about is that screen these these sections on the side here are just all about the SCVs so there's no need to worry um, <laughs> about the complicated about how complicated this screen is it's not actually Oh, if you just you can press this one do this um, it's not actually too complicated um, once you get used to it um, so moving down we can see that we've got the command arm with the these are your auxiliary controls so for, for controlling your hydraulics this is obviously the throttle on the left hand side this is your linkage controls here for operating the front linkage and the rear linkage should you have both and then as well you've also got the two PTOs front PTO there and back and the rear PTO as well um, to operate and then on, moving on to the right hand side here you've got several um, buttons here which can operate the, the front suspension, diff lock, automatic diff lock etc etc, uh, different PTO speeds and uh, there's uh, different speeds and, and you can put, set the machine to be in a high range or a low range for example and then you can also control TMS in, in your pedal mode for example so um, it's a very nice place to be, that is one thing about this vent is it is a nice place to be um, I must say it, everything does feel as if it's been made out of um, good quality materials. <clears throat> Fence are the price they are for a reason. Generally speaking, you do pay for what you get. Um, but having a look around and just sitting in this cab, it does feel like a premium environment. Um, and I, and you, can, you can actually see where the extra money has gone. So that is really why they are the price they are, because they are very, very expensive although they do hold their, va their value as well. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Fent 724 is a German tractor and it's made in Germany. So because it's a, a German built machine, it should be, uh, and they generally are, very efficient and also very reliable as well. Um, so they're good machines and uh, you pay for what you get. And one thing, they do hold their money. So that's uh, one of the best parts, I think, from what I've been told of, uh, of owning a Fent. So um, if we just uh, look to the, to the front here now, we'll literally just start the engine up and we'll just take it out out to the yard. On the right hand side, I forgot to mention guys, there's a really nice um, Merlot there, which is a TF35.7. So a 3.5 tonne lift and a seven meter reach. And it's got the new cab on it as well. And I must say it does look quite an interesting little telehandler. And it's also got Merlot's standard um, hydrostatic transmission as well. So that is definitely a machine I'd love to go and have a look at. Um, they've also as well got a candy orange Voltra in the depot there, which they're just doing some work on and uh, it is very unique, I must say. Um, so let's uh, have to take this vent out and uh, just see what it's like moving forwards and backwards. Okay, so I've just popped the keys in and I'll just take the steering wheel down to make the clutch. And there we go, we are on now. And the computer and everything should fire up in a minute. I'll just wait for it to come on. And then uh, we can literally, oh, here we go. And then we can literally um, take the handbrake off on the side here and then push the joystick forwards uh, to go forwards. So there we go. And just like that, we're moving forwards with the vent. There we go. And you can also as well go back to pedal mode by simply pressing the pedal. I'm just going to go back to pedal mode because it is just so easy to operate a vent with the pedal on. Um, and then you can literally go forwards and backwards um, like so. If, if I just um, operate the shuttle on the back there, you can see that you can then operate um, the reverse system as well. And then as well, what I do quite like is that you've also got the um, forwards and backwards on the joystick. So if I just lock the joystick, it controls the shuttle as well as controlling um, the forwards and backwards should you require it with the pedal mode there as well. So you can take it out of the pedal mode. Um, but the Vario is a very nice transmission. Um, as a lot of you guys know, on the uh, Massey Ferguson I demoed, the 771A, um, that as well had the Vario transmission, and it was absolutely fantastic, that transmission. And equally in this vent, um, obviously with the same transmission, it is very nice. But what's also nice about this vent is that you've also got, um, the whole package is nice as well. So it's not just 
the, 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 the transmission from Fent. It's the whole package, it's everything. It's the ergonomics, it's the build quality, it's the premium environment you're in, the resale value, for example. So I've just gone back to the stick camera to give you guys some sort of idea as to what it is like in the Fent. So if I just move the joystick to the left, it will then initiate reverse there, and we're now going into reverse. And if I want to go back into forwards, I can simply do the same again. Oh. And that like so there, we're in forwards again. So it's quite a nice feature there, having your shuttle on a joystick, um, as well as having it on the shuttle on the left-hand side there as well. Um, so I'll just literally just take it out of the yard here, and then we'll just spin back round and go back into the uh, depot. Um, but it is a, a lovely machine, this, and I really love the big curved windscreen. It's absolutely fantastic. It really is um, a lovely environment to be in. If I just come out of here, we're just on an industrial estate, and if I just come out of here and then spin it around, I can understand why a lot of farmers do buy these fences because they are absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously, you'd need a bit of time with it on the farm, um, but this tractor, as some of you, as I told you earlier, it's got 240 horsepower, but that's not boosted horsepower, that is just from standard. So it's always running um, at 240 horsepower. Whereas um, other tractor manufacturers do like to have the boost on their machines um, and then boost them up, obviously, but uh, not with Fen. Apparently, every um, machine they have, uh, they are not boosted. They, are, uh, they run at the horsepower which they are sold as, um, which is quite a nice um, thought to have uh, when you've, you've got your tractor, um, for example. So I'm just literally gonna pull it up here now and we'll get a lovely thumbnail, hopefully, and then uh, I'll go and pop her back uh, round to the dealership. One thing I've just noticed coming back into this maze of machinery is how good the steering lock is on this thing. Um, although it's very good on the new John Deere's as well. So um, a, a lot of the machines, I mean, now have, have actually progressed quite a lot. Um, and the steering locks have improved considerably um, over the old 6930s because the, it's not that I'm uh, having a go at the 6930, but the steering lock on it isn't great. Um, so that is one thing which these new machines have evolved with is actually the steering locks on them. They're a lot, lot better now. So having a look around the machine, we can see that the styling is very nice. It's very futuristic. It's a, a lovely, lovely machine. It really is. And I'd love to have one on demo. I, um, I wouldn't have the Fence 724 actually, um, because it's quite a lot of horsepower um, for what we require at home on the farm. Um, I think we'd actually be looking at something more like a 718 or a 716, for example. Um, although if you need a lot of horsepower in a compact, smaller tractor, shall we say, um, look no further than the 724 because you've got 240 horsepower in a, a sort of 180 horsepower 200 horsepower tractor's frame so you're getting a lot of power in there in a, a smaller package um, although of course it does come at a price but it's a very very nice machine um, and i'm sure that if i had one on demo i would probably fall in love with one <laughs> so let me let me know in the comments section below what you think of the vent would you rather have um a vent or would you rather have a john deere equivalent so um, I think the equivalent of this would probably be a very highly specced John Deere 6215R um, or possibly a 6230R um, but let me know in the comments below because I'd love to hear from you guys what you think about the Fent tractors. Do you think they're very expensive and they're perhaps overpriced or do you think uh, they're an absolute bargain and they're a machine uh, which is very efficient and holds its value um, on the second hand market? Um, so let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear from you guys. So there we go guys, um, it's been very nice to have a look at the fence today and uh, just have a look at the um, overall cab and everything. It's quite a nice environment to be in. Like I said, it's well built. The build quality is absolutely superb. And I'll just lock the, uh, lock the door up there as well. Yeah, it has been locked up. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.